In this video we'll be installing this Mangol camera in a Skoda Octavia 2 from 2010. First thing, thank you very much Mangol for sending this in. I'm quite uh, curious uh, to see what we have inside the package. So it's a front 4K and rear 1080p dash cam for the Skoda Octavia. Exact model right here. So let's uh, get into the package and uh, cut this seal open in high speed. If you want a little bit more info about Mangol right here. And let's take a look inside. Slide that out and slowly open this really good seal and it's open let's see what we get a little bit of info before installation yes i'm going to show this to you and i'm also going to read it uh, myself Feel free to pause at any moment uh, to read what you need and contact Mangol Tech if you have any issues whatsoever with it. Some zip, zip ties, uh, user manual from what I see here, quality control pass, a bit of uh, packaging material, daughters will play with that for sure. Maybe it's even not a good idea to give it to them because they will spread it all around. Um, a prying tool for plastic uh, elements of your car, this orange one. Black one, I think it's to hide uh, the wires going to the camera. That's my first impression. We have here uh, the wiring harness uh, from the fuse box because this particular Octavia does not have any sort of uh, rain sensor or... Uh, uh, auto darkening uh, rear view mirror or anything like that so basically we are taking power from the fuse box itself this is why we have uh, this uh, wiring harness right here we'll see about it uh, so we have accessory positive ground and uh, Kioxia that's quite a good quality card honestly 128 gigabyte card Okay, wasn't expecting that. So, Kioxia Exceria. Okay, that's really nice. And let's see right here. Actually, I think this is first. Oh, this is nice. So, this is the camera itself. And the rear view mirror basically goes right here through the middle. So we have the wires here, this is for the rear camera going uh, to the back of the car and uh, this is power that will be coming from, uh, uh, from the fuse box. So we basically have uh, 12 volt uh, always on, uh, neutral and uh, also in their accessory which only goes on when you put on the contact in the car. That's actually better than I expected honestly, it's really nice and the wires will be hidden even more hidden with uh, this black plastic so yeah really cool i really like what i'm seeing up until now nice job man gold rear camera with a ton of wire so we can go easily to the rear of this car without any issues this will be on the rear uh, windshield I, from what i see yeah it's adjustable so we can align it uh, whatever way we want. Make sure the screen is not... <laughs> yeah, probably you need to check your alignment when you <laughs> glue the camera. So make sure everything is on. So some 3M uh, double-sided tape in case you need to change that one that's pre-applied. And lots of packaging. But no, don't give it to the daughters. They will mess things up. So yeah, one goal. Awesome uh, until now. I almost said Punakum, <laughs> which is until now in Romanian. So 
let's get to installing this thing as soon as weather outside permits me to do that. Even if it's raining outside, I couldn't stop myself from checking uh, what's inside of this. So uh, I just pulled on it just slightly. This was not clipped, so uh, they did good and did not clip this uh, in place. So it allowed me to open it much easier. And basically camera stays nicely in one side right here. So you see the lens is quite a big lens, which is nice. We see the camera, the SD card, micro SD card opening, which is right here, goes through. And here is um, the, the camera circuitry itself. And I can go with this thing, not clip it in place, just place it on the mirror and make sure everything fits perfectly. Just a quick test in the Octavia. It fits perfectly in here and you don't need to put any uh, double-sided tape or anything like that. It just locks in place in there. Has this lip that goes above this between it and uh, the windshield itself and pff, it's exactly what it should be. I'm curious if it also works in the Audi. This look quite similar, but who knows if they are perfectly the same. <laughs> In typical car manufacturer uh, fashion, they are, well, I don't know, 95% the same, but not 100% identical. This lower part is a bit longer in this area, so it hits uh, this right here. <laughs> yeah, if you were really desperate, you could modify this, but no, do not do that. Uh, tell uh, them exactly what uh, car you have, what model, uh, send them pictures with this thing and what not, and they will send you directly what fits. I had the impression that this can perfectly fit both cars, it cannot. So it works perfectly on the Octavia for which uh, we want it, uh, but for the Audi it's just a tiny bit different. Thanks car manufacturers for making things close but not exact <laughs> and on a colder summer morning finally it's time to install this so obviously split in half and i'm going to close it on top of the uh, winch uh, winch mirror rear view mirror whatever it's called half of it is on the mirror perfectly fitting really really nice and snug fit and now i'm just going to come with the half containing the camera on top of it. I will not remove this protection because I don't want to get the lens dirty until everything is finished. To be able to close this properly, make sure the wires are tucked into this half properly and the locations for the clips are visible uh, in there and there's nothing, uh, I don't know, interrupting uh, the clipping process. Whoa, this was extremely satisfying to clip in place and it's absolutely not moving at all. And the, 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 the join is extremely good on this. Opened up the bag with the connection wires. They gave us a huge assortment depending on what uh, we'll find in the car. One of those will be good. Also the card, we will put that in later. And also this to cover the wires again later after everything is connected this will be used uh, probably now but I need to take a look at this cable and run it uh, to the fuse box as is and then we'll see what we connect uh, to it from that depending on what we find in the fuse box with the included tool opening up the fuse cover What I want to mention at first, this car does not have uh, curtain airbags, so uh, it's a bit easier. Normally the igniter is located in this area in most cars, so be really careful with what you poke in there and what you do, you don't want that going off. So we put our little hands in there and it's, you can hear it popping. It's coming out, it has all of these clips that go in those uh, plastic uh, holes and do not break any of them that would be annoying one last stubborn clip and now slowly get it out uh, 
from its location in the dash. And next we want to connect the power wire. This is off, uh, cover is off. We just want to get the wire through here somewhere and get it right in that area. And then I will just wrap it around this one. I could use zip ties, but I could also wrap it around the existing one and uh, that will work. So I have this side of the wire here. It's going through the back of everything and it's coming out through here. And again, I will wrap around the pre-existing wire. And it's done. And now I will just push it behind this until we get to where we need to connect it. It will just sit behind all of this because you can, really hard for me to show you, you can pull it down enough to put a wire behind it. I have this uh, in the right area, I just need to connect them and put uh, this connection again behind this using this pry tool. Do not pull on this too much, it's uh, beginning to get brittle from age and marks can remain on it. And our cable is tucked in all the way and comes out here, goes nicely down in here and all of it is around here and we just need to connect it. And then we will gather this up in a bundle and uh, we have plenty of room behind this to store it. And now to put this thing back in place, you just make sure it slides into its location. Do not damage any wires that you might have in that area. So I need to check uh, what mine is doing basically. Okay, it slide it in there. And now begin to push it in while making sure all of these pins go into their respective holes. Extremely hard for me to do that on camera, but uh, yeah, you get the point. And start pushing uh, this in. Okay, pre-aligned them and then just slowly bump it in place. And that should be done and sadly yeah this is uh, how it looks like in this area this is how it always looked like in this area so nothing that i can do here so i poked around and it seems that this uh, always have power this row right here and this only when you put the contact on so one of the fuses will be going in here and one will be going uh, in here and we obviously uh, have chosen the type of fuses that we have and we have pre-installed uh, pre 2 amp fuses for the camera which is perfect let's plug this in there there are many more uh, variants uh, depending on what car model you have to choose from connecting ground right here this screw is a Torx T25 head so that's quite okay checked and we have ground connected this which um, is accessory power I will also put some insulation tape to make sure nothing moves but this connection is surprisingly uh, strong so I like it just finishing up in here I moved both of these just a little bit more to the left so they stay uh, nicer behind uh, the cover no chance of touching it and creating any sort of rattle or noise zip tied wires together everything is in place and not moving ever again which is perfect but you can still pull them out and work on the fuses under them uh, there's enough wire for that this part is done now, so i'm going to put the card in the camera first and then put the contact on the car and uh, have the camera turn on. Quite self-explanatory. Just push it in there. If it doesn't want to go in, most likely you got it in the wrong way around, so flip it. And let me rotate the key. And it's on. It beeped at us, but also my parking sensors beeped. 
and it also started to record directly so I need to install the app and connect to it and see what it sees. Also remove the blue plastic from the camera lens. This is a long manual but I will just film it quickly and you can pause wherever you need and read whatever you need. So on Google Play I search for Skycam uh, app and I will install it. Open the app, agree, next, while using the app, allow all, and at this point add camera. Maybe we will need to start it again, I have no clue because it's been running for a while. Yep, it's powered on. And now I will go to connect uh, to the camera from Wi-Fi. So that was the camera. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And do not auto reconnect. Reconnect. I will connect uh, to it myself every single time I want to see videos from the camera, and this will save me the risk. Uh, of the phone connecting to the camera instead of my Wi-Fi uh, when the car is uh, turned on next to the house. Connect. Press the back button and now we are back uh, in the app. Camera was found. And yeah, we have a feed and the image is quite good. That's freaking awesome. And obviously centered because that's a perfect position onto that mirror, let me try and move it and you'll see now I'm trying to move it, I'm trying to pull and push on it, nothing happens that's absolutely perfect okay and obviously you have a lot of settings, manual will show you um, sound recording if you want it, uh, speaker volume resolution for photos, it's set to maximum video 4k plus uh, full HD for the rear camera that's not connected I will connect it now with the rear camera uh, I'm not really sure if we stay on 4k or we go to 2k I think I will go to 2k I want a, a bit um, lower resolution one minute or three minutes for the loop recording I think three minutes is just fine wide dynamic range watermark Collision sensing. Let's see. Uh, medium. Uh, no parking. I don't need that. And you can change the Wi Fi uh, password and to format the card if you want or to factory reset. That's quite cool. And if you want to access the film what the camera uh, recorded it's right here so this is what it recorded since we powered it on and while i was uh, fiddling with uh, everything that's actually quite cool i like this blinking blue led camera is recording let's take uh, the contact remove the contact so rotate the key and remove it from uh, its, I don't know, location. Camera should stop recording any moment now, I think. And it just did. Now let's deal with the rear connection. I need to get the wires all through the car up to the back and to do that i'm going to be removing probably this thingy right here pass them through here then removing that right there pass them through there and then get them all the way back 
slide it nicely down there and start uh, pulling on it. Yeah, <laughs> it jumped right back in place. You kind of need to find the area where it has some clips and those need to to release for this thing to come to come out. I'm not sure where the clips are. Uh, what I see now, there's also a metal behind it, so do your best not to go behind the metal because that way you will never have it uh, undone and you and with a prying tool from the front of it just lightly start moving everything and at this point you simply grab it and take it out it has two clips at the top and to get everything out one screw here and one screw here and this should fall off probably just has some uh, some clips somewhere yeah and it's slowly coming out and obviously if you want to fully get it out you just uh, pull on these uh, clips at the sides and you yank it out uh, what we need to do is get this thingy under everything and uh, get it somewhere around this area getting this ready we have a, a backup 3m uh, tape one is right here and they are telling us hey make sure you do not install this thing in reverse because then your image will be rotated so make sure you connect it and uh, check what's uh, what's up and what's down. We will obviously do that. But now I need uh, to disconnect its uh, cable and it's out. So this is basically just an extension cable. And now I'm going to start uh, routing it through the uh, headliner of the car, above the headliner. Connected this. And now I'm just making sure it uh, doesn't get in the way of anything and I will slowly route it uh, above the headliner. To get this thing back in place you obviously plug in the connector, it clicks in place, uh, lift it in here. Uh, and then now and put in the two Phillips screws. Opened the door to make sure everything is working because uh, the lights uh, timed out. Now we put uh, this protection lens in here, slowly push on both sides and it's locked in place. Remove this rear light. It doesn't necessarily have uh, clips, it just kind of locks with uh, these uh, two things in place and it has the latches on the bottom. To open this up further, we need to undo the two uh, Phillips screws. Is this, ah, this is a clip, sorry. I didn't notice it. That's a clip. And there's another clip on that side. So in theory, if we pull on those clips, yeah, it will release. It's a bit different, it seems, from front. And if you want to fully take this out, uh, clips on both sides of this. So you just pull on them and lift uh, the connector. This is just a metal clip that clips in there, so you can just squeeze it and get it out. And at this point I want to remove this thing to have more access. So it is a bit annoying because we do have a clip right here. You can see it, so that's one, that one is already undone. And we just uh, continue to pull on it and do not break it so don't uh, don't bend it you can see all sorts of clips all the way in and it's out and these are the types of uh, clips it has they are quite strong this if this was never taken out it's really hard to remove them after that's handled we have a torx right here prob probably uh, t20 remove that Screw removed, now uh, start slowly pulling on it and see where we have some clips because sure as hell we have lots of clips of this type. And now pull uh, slightly towards the back of it again. Okay, in my situation I found a little screw. Is this normal or not? I have no clip, clue but I need to undo it. What you need to do now is push on this to unlock it from the bottom one. Probably they are really meant to come out together. 
yeah this is not really working uh, you will be bending lots of clips at the bottom and I think we have a screw here coming from the trunk somewhere that keeps both of these in place but I have enough room for what I need so I can pull a wire through there okay to get the wire I need to remove this plastic uh, nut clip I have no idea how it's called if I could actually get behind it somehow anyhow yeah it's freaking stubborn I need to get it out so be back okay managed to put a thicker and uh, more uh, not strong more stiff wire stiffer wire all the way through here so now I can uh, put our wire uh, next to it and pull it they are connected together so now I can pull on the brown one and we'll pull this black one too success now I just need to pull the slack of the wire in there actually no I will keep here only as much wire I need to go right here in the middle but now I need to also unplug this thingy from right here probably has yeah a weird style but anyway I don't think this is how it was supposed to come out probably it should have come out with the plastic also but doesn't matter I need to get my wire in here through this and inside of this but also this needs to come out that's going to be fun isn't it again with the brown wire I fished the cable out through here through this hole and it's coming from the top right there now I need to get it through this thingy in here what's a bit disturbing we have this black tube right here and it's broken at this end and I didn't do that so hopefully that's not uh, the water for the uh, rear windshield wiper this trunk trim first thing that you want to do is to remove the torx holding this thing to do this from the middle you put a prying tool underneath it until you can get your fingers and start pulling because it will have a lot of clips all around just an idea so you see what you are dealing with they will come out of the plastic instead of the metal if this was never opened up and there are lots of them all over the place careful at the corners because this is latched into the one remaining on the car so you totally need to remove the other one to get to this screw and this screw and now start pulling on it and these clips are really fun because they barely come out this thing seems to be staying in there on this particular Octavia model so this will not be coming camera focus coming out there's a hole but yeah pull do not damage your heating of the glass nope it wanted out and it looks like this but for me it's enough I only need access to half because I'm running a cable for the camera for the rear view camera reached with the cable right here through that hole right there and now I'm going to go and get it out through here and come to the camera in the middle and connect everything and we are kind of done just need to button up things back and peeled off the tapes and glued the camera in position made sure the image is right side up really important keep in mind that you are lowering this uh, yeah we didn't want it in the middle my father said better on the side so it's not something sticking in here and it honestly doesn't really matter that much so uh, yeah let's start putting the wire back and closing plastics all wires are nicely together that's patched up hopefully it will work so now just put the rubber on top of uh, this little plastic fellow most likely that white plastic also needs to come out but it's it, it's so uh, stiff at this moment that probably I will break it if I try again yeah I needed to remove this thing to be able to put the rubber back in uh, don't ask me how I do it lots of cursing pulling but luckily I didn't break it honestly I kind of used this tool this sharp tool on the side of the bottom clip come on I cannot even show you the damn bottom clip that one right there and somehow I managed to get it out and then I yanked this uh, like, like this on the side it's yeah, it's a shit job for the top one the excess was even worse but I managed again with this tool to pry it in that 
hole and push it so it unlocked the clip. Just stupid dumb luck. And this little piece of crap is now ready to be pushed back in place and it should lock. Let's hear the satisfying click. To get these stupid things out so we can put back the plastic in, this is the only thing that properly works. And this is what you end up with. Only way to get them out. Plastic had no chance. Starting to put this plastic back. Just make sure all the clips get aligned with the holes. Uh, push it in there. Great. Now make sure this gets aligned with its hole. And we have another clip right here. And put uh, this stupid thingy back in there but I think I need to smack it a little bit with something and it's perfectly in so it needs to be smacked put back the screws on both sides so yeah the plastic is in at this point when trying to put this back be really careful these things need to go into uh, this so uh, yeah do that first then these things go into these holes and all the others in all the other holes align them properly Keep in mind, on both sides, these ones at the radius are a different type. These stupid ones right at the radius are the wrong uh, direction. <sighs> so I need to somehow get them out and rotate them 90 degrees. That's why they are different. Finally managed to slide this piece of shit back in. You need to slide it from here. And you have clips all around. They will not fit. They will not enter their holes. You also have the plics, uh, uh, clips going into the plastic. That will not fit also. You have some sliders that go behind the metal. Those will not go in place also. We wasted at least an hour pushing on this thing. But once that is done, you are starting to push all over. And it will go in place. And now I need to put a screw and I'm done. But this is the worst piece of engineering that I have ever seen honestly okay so removed the remaining clips that were stuck in there with some pliers <sighs> and now I'm going to try to align them every single one there's one in there I need to slide it in because I cannot get it out also make sure that the uh, clips from underneath go into from the black one go into the white one it's gonna be fun isn't it but let's do what we can screw is back in place this is in position, I will put this stupid screw in and it's done. I have my wire run through here, but this sucks, this area sucks. As everything in this trunk sucks on this Octavia. Really, 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 really bad design. Okay, next step, put this back in here. Even this is fighting all the way. Okay, to put this thing back, try to align everything as good as you can and start uh, pushing and about the same ah, something's not aligned presumably make sure you get the ends in first on both sides and then rest of it slack wire zip tied in here and it will stay on the side I'm putting this thingy back in place right here it will lock by itself yeah I need both hands to do this after that's in, we can put again this thingy back. It locks and put in its screws. And it's working just fine. Now put this thing like that. Do not break it, so just slowly push it in place. And it's locked. Uh, so slide those things in and then just push it. Oh, one of them escaped. Stubborn and it's on and the finishing touch I cut this a bit shorter so now I can uh, slide it in there over the wires and I should be able normally I think you are supposed to slide it onto this one but I cannot really so I need to push it onto it just don't crack the windshield ah no it clips in place extremely easily and really nicely so good job man this this camera is really nice Everything fits really, really well and everything is thought out extremely well. Great! I really want to mention that this actually does look really, really well. And this is how the rear looks if you're wondering. This is why my father wanted it on the side, not in the middle.
for me, honestly, I would have put it in the middle. He decided on the side, eh, who am I to judge? Just look how well this sits in here. It's perfect. Let's connect and see if we can also see the rear camera now. So this is the front, let's switch to rear. Spoof. And we have rear. <laughs> it's working. Yes, uh, it's in direct sunlight now. And also on the right lower side, we see a little bit of uh, of the trunk inside. That's because my father wanted it um, on, the, on the side and not on the middle. Camera has nothing to do with uh, this. It is what it is because we installed it where we installed it. But uh, yeah, it's freaking awesome. Next, I will give you a bit of... Uh, samples when um, using this thing basically in the city. And that's about it for this video. In my opinion, the quality is really good and the fitment of this camera is perfect. So thank you very much Mangol for sending this in. It makes driving this car on today's roads much safer. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, in which case please give it a like, check out my other videos and as always see you in the next one. Bye.